Hi guys, today we will be doing 3D tracking in DaVinci Fusion for beginners. It's a fun little project, uh, so let's get into it. First thing we'll need is a video clip and I downloaded this clip off Pexels. I noticed when I downloaded it, that it's actually a 4K piece of footage and dropping that into a 2K timeline might actually give you a problem. So what I did was click on the footage, right click, go create new timeline using selected clip under here where it says use project settings, just untick that and go to format and change it from 1920 down to 3840 by 2160 like that and then create. Now I've already done it, so I don't need it. So I'm going to go back to our timeline and let's get started. So I'm going to drag our clip in, right click on it and hit open in Fusion. So here we are in Fusion. Fusion likes to rename things, so what we're going to do is, this is our video, we're going to click on that and we're going to hit F2 and we're going to call it Desert. Now because we're going to have a lot of nodes in this, I'm going to right click in a blank area and say Arrange Tools to Grid like so. So now time to add our camera tracker, so click on the uh, Desert, hit Shift Spacebar and type in Camera. And we're looking for this one here, camera tracker. And we'll just add that. Go down to the uh, dots just here and make sure that it's that right one selected and that'll put it in the right hand window. Come across to the right hand side and under auto track, hit preview auto track locations. I had to zoom out a little bit to show those, but there, all those green dots are our tracking points. We need a few more of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower this value here Believe it or not, it increases the amount of points. And the same for this. We get about, that should be enough right there. We now need to go down and under tracking range where it says bi-directional tracking, click that. And what that does is it gives us a better track. Now I'm going to hit auto track now. And depending on your machine, it can take a, a bit of time to do that. So what I'll do is I'll speed this up and I'll come straight back to you. So the camera's done its track and the next step um, to do is hit the solve button. What the solve does is it looks at all the tracking points and it basically calculates and says how good of a job have I done of tracking this footage and we're actually looking for a value below one. So same again for the, um, for the tracking. Uh, it takes a bit of time to do this so I'm going to hit it and then I'm going to come back to you. So to solve it, just click on this button here. So it's finished solving and it looks like it's done a really good job. If we come across to the right hand side, we can see our average solve error is 0 0.2289, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so we can move on to the next step. And the next step is we need to go to this menu here, the export menu. We're going to Un, um, bring this down by clicking there and we're going to change it from aligned to unaligned. Now what we're doing here is we're telling uh, the software some information that it can't figure out. Uh, for instance, it doesn't know whether these mountains here are the floor, it doesn't know whether this tower is the floor, so we have to actually give it that information. And let me show you what I mean. We're going to do with the origin first. And the origin uh, is essentially the center of our 3D universe. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. We're going to highlight this one just here. And we're going to go down here and say set from selection. We'll zoom back out. And now what we're going to do, again, left click and just drag over and drag over a load of points like that. And we're going to go here and under orientation, hit set from selection. We've actually set the, told the computer where the, where the ground is there. And if we go down to ground plane options just here, we can hit show view. Now that's not shown up there, but it will when we do our export. We now need to go back up here and change it from unaligned back to aligned like that. Right, now what we need to do is hit this export button just here. We don't actually need our camera tracker anymore. So what I'm going to do is click it and just hit delete like that. I'm also going to uh, unlink that and take the camera tracker and link it straight into the media out like that and put that in the window. Now nothing appears to have changed, but it actually has. If I go to the double view window just here and then go to this merge and click the one, the number one on your keyboard. Look at that. 
our 3D universe has come to life. So we've got our ground plane, the floor just here. We've got our point cloud and we've got our image in the background. So what we can do now is add some text. So what we're going to do is come up to our toolbar here. And we're going to bring in a text 3D node. And we're also going to bring in a merge node. And the reason I do that is I like to keep my objects on a separate merge to my um, lights, cameras and everything. It just simplifies my life. So clicking on the text, let's come over here and we're going to type in some text. So we're going to say the desert. We're going to go down and change the font. I'm going to use the go bold uh, font, this one just here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it in size. I make sure you're on the text node, go to the first one and you can see just here, I can increase it in size and decrease it like that. So we'll make it about, about there. Now what we'll do is make sure you're on the, the first menu, go down to extrusion just here at the bottom. I'm going to go to the text node and in the left window here, this dot just here, I'm going to click that and we can see our text. I'm going to go to the top view. And we can see actually that it has no depth. Now, before I give that extrusion, I'm actually going to copy that now. So right click, hit copy, bring over here, blank area, control V to paste. And that will make sense in a minute. So back on that note here, we're in the window. I'm going to give it a bit of extrusion. You can add, add uh, uh, some subdivisions and a little bit of a bevel if you want like that. Now I don't like the way it's rotated to camera. So what I'm going to do is go up to make sure I'm on the node, go to the transform section just here. And so on the rotation, just rotate it. Hold the control key while you do it. And there we are. We can see that it's rotating it on the Y like that. Now the next thing is um, I don't like the color. Um, so let's fix that. So what we need to do is go to the shading tab just here, go down. And uh, where it says um, material, solid or image, we're going to click on image. We're also going to go down and see here where it says image source. We're going to change that from tool to clip like that. Now I downloaded this texture from uh, Vector Easy. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description below. But essentially we're going to grab that texture, bring it across and just drop it in this window like that. And voila, it's changed into that material. One thing you can do is on the color just here, uh, click this thing here. I don't know what you call it. The uh, pipette, is it? Let's just drag that in. And we're going to drag a color from like here like that. And what that will do is it will just give it a, a little bit of subtlety of the desert in there as well. So it's looking a bit dark, uh, but it's an easy fix. We're going to go to this merge here. We're going to hit shift space bar. We're looking for a ambient light which is that one there. We're going to add that and click on the ambient light. We're going to use our picker tool here, drag it into the scene and just go over a bit of sand. And that will give it, if you look just here, it gives it that little bit of color there, makes it more believable. Now what we need to do is go to the camera tracker just here and in the right hand side, hit enable lighting like that. And it darkens the image. So what we need to do is go to our ambient light. Currently it's set to 0.2. Let's change that to 1.2 and see what happens. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. Now, remember earlier when I um, copied this text node over here, there was a good reason for that. And the reason is, is I want to create a shadow from it. And the way we do that is we're going to click on it, come across to the right hand side and change the color to a, actually we're going to take a color from the desert here, click on it and then take it right down like that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to come across to here to this camera. We're going to right click on it, copy it, bring it across here and paste. We're now going to bring in a merge node. And we're going to connect that in like that. We're also going to copy this camera tracker as well. So click on it, right click, hit copy, control V, hit paste and connect that in. Now you're probably wondering why did I do all of that? Why didn't I just connect this text over here to this one here? And the reason for that is you can't add a blur node in the 3D world. You actually have to add it in the 2D world. So this is our uh, 3D world being translated into a 2D world. 
If I was to add a blur to that, watch what happens. I'll increase the intensity. It blurs everything and I don't want that. I only want the text. So what we'll do is we'll delete that blur no doubt. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to add a uh, arm to this by holding the Alt key and being over there, uh, over the line like that. Bring that down like that and going to drag and emerge, put it on the line and take this camera and bring it out and connect it in. You can now see that we've got our black text and our text on top of each other. So what we need to do is go to the text 3D, go across to the transform and in the rotation we need to rotate it 90 degrees. There we are. We now need to put it in the right hand window like so. And let's just rotate it on, on its uh, Y value as well. Holding the control key just to line it up like that. Let's zoom in. We also need to move it a little bit. So holding the control key, just move it in the Z and the X as well, just to make sure it lines up like that. And let's just fit that to window. Looking very cool, very cool. Now we've done that, so we can go to this camera tracker now and add the blur. Bring that down like that. And now when I blur that, it's only blurring the shadow. You know what I mean? To hold the control key when you're doing it is because it is very, very sensitive. There we are, just like that. Now to make it more believable as well, uh, that shadow is a bit too dark and we can actually fix that. Because if we go down to this merge just here, let's just zoom in, we could take the blend down like this and it just makes it a little bit more believable. So let's go to the uh, timeline and play that back. Now the only thing I don't like is it looks like the text is a little bit off the ground there. So we're going to check that. So I'm going to go back inside. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this merge here. Make sure we've got two windows open. Click one to put it in the window like that. Then what we're going to do is go to this part of the where it says top X, Y. We're going to hit that and go right view. And we can see our point cloud here, but we can't see the floor. So what we need to do is go to the point cloud and see where it says size just here. Just drag that down. Again, you might need to use the control key to do that. Don't worry about that. Yeah. And on our text now, we can click on that, go across to transform. And what we can do is just move it up in the Y and just see what was happening. So it's about there. So that looks better. We do need to adjust that shadow because that shadow is slightly off as well. So we're going to put that in the uh, right hand window like that. We need to go to the top view. Clicking on the text, we're going to go over to the transform. We're just going to rotate it in the Y like that and just move it in the X just to make sure it's lined up a little bit better. So I went back in and just had adjusted that shadow a little bit because it was still off a little bit. But here's the final result. Like I say, uh, it's not the best composite in the world, but it does give you a basic understanding of how the 3D tracker works. Um, so, you know, you can actually download this project from my website. Just hit subscribe below, uh, go to the link in the uh, description and just put in your email and you can download this project and any other project on the site for totally free of charge. Um, please note, I don't spam. I hate spam, so I will not be spamming you. So in the next tutorial, I am going to show you how to do this, where we uh, take text and wrap it around a building um, and show you how to improve your track as well. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any comments, leave them below. If you have any ideas for tutorials, leave them below. I love reading them and I'll see you in the next one.